Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. 2024 has really been a year of kind of underwhelming releases. I haven't really had anything that I've taken out of the box and kind of wowed me in the sense of this in-hand feel, in-hand performance, and the additional goodies. The Pulsar Feynman is definitely one of the top tier unboxing experiences and one of the best experiences in terms of size, shape, performance, weight balance that I've personally had this year. The Feynman is a in-between of the Pulsar X Lite size 1 and size 2, making it for me a really nice shape in terms of my own personal performance because it's large enough to be able to palm it when I want to hunker down and get some additional stability, but it's also small enough to be able to fingertip this bad boy or claw grip and really get a lot of in-hand maneuverability as well. So for anybody who uses a hybrid grip, it's actually very good. And anybody with smaller hands with primarily a palm grip, I think would really enjoy this size as well. To me, the in-between of size one and size two is actually absolutely perfect, making it a better size and shape for me comparatively to the diff at or hyper speed that I absolutely loved, as well as a little bit better for me than the Vaxi E1. So right now for me, this is going to be my top pick for an ergonomic mouse moving into 2025. Personally, though, again, subjectively, you need to be aware that one, I love magnesium. I love that cool feel when you pick up the mouse. I love the durability of it, the overall feeling of it without the uh, uh, feeling of primarily plastic under my hand. I just think it feels more premium. It feels really good. Number two, I think the weight at 46 grams with the included dots in the box comes in perfectly in terms of weight and weight balance. It feels like a light 46 grams. You pick this up. I was actually surprised when I saw that it was 46 grams because it actually feels much lighter. It feels, I would say, closer to the low 40 gram mark and the weight balancing is perfect. Another nice change that they've done on the Feynman compared to the likes of Final Mouse, which by the way, this mouse comes in at the same price as the Final Mice. And I think it's just unquestionably a better feeling product, a better performing product for me personally, size and shape wise. But one of the nice things they've done is the enclosure on the inside of the mouse. You can't see the battery. You can't see any of the cables and it makes it look very sleek. It maintains this aesthetic that flows with the exterior body shell. To me, that makes a big difference, especially when you're paying $180. You will see that they have shaved off a little bit of weight by not having any buttons on the bottom of the mouse. However, the button there at the bottom for on, off, and DPI, very accessible, not something that you need to use a tool. You can easily access it with your fingertip. Now, this mouse, again, being in its current state, one of the things you need to be aware of is the magnesium alloy body does not flex at all. That is one of the nice things about magnesium when performed correctly, you won't have any give in the shell. And this is a mouse that does not have any give in any area of pushing in, even in the very thin areas of the magnesium on the top shell. The alloy scroll wheel is very nice as well. And with the Pulsar Blue Encoder, it's a feeling when you're scrolling up and down that feels very light. These, these steps are rather noticeable, but it's not something like a Vaxi E1 or a Zowie mouse. It's a little bit looser, a little bit faster, but it really does feel like a really smooth and premium scroll experience. Moving from the ratio switches to the Kale Opticals, I'll give you guys a little sound test now. Now, Mouse 1 and Mouse 2, those Kale Opticals feel so light and crispy. It is so easy to spam these switches. Some of the most spammable switches in a mouse that has released this year. So exceptionally good. Light, tight, crisp is the best way to explain the feeling of the switches of the mouse. The side buttons, likewise, feel exceptionally good. And at $180, you don't just want good main buttons. You want good side buttons also. When you hit the button on the bottom, all the way at the bottom, all the way at the top, very little flex or push upwards of those side buttons, which is what you like to see when there's good build quality. Pre-travel on the side buttons, almost non-existent. And post-travel, very, very minimal, only on one of my side buttons. Mouse 3 is exceptionally spammable, even with that metal alloy wheel. So like overall, there's just nothing that I can really point to that I don't like about the Feynman. 
And I love that the, the dongle acts as a charging station for the mouse as well. You guys will see there is no USB-C on this mouse. And I think that's totally okay. If you have your dongle close to your mouse and easily accessible, when you're ready to charge your mouse, all you have to do is plop it on the charging station. And you'll see that it lights up with the charging indicator. So exceptionally easy to put it on. It charges quickly. And my 8K performance mixed with this dongle, mixed with the new Pulsar sensor, 8K performance in every game has been absolutely pristine. It feels very good in terms of performance, but most importantly, no hiccups, no stutters, no issues whatsoever with any frequency dropouts or any feelings as though I'm getting those little hiccups in game, which some mice with 8K performance have at certain times. So overall, between the build quality, the overall size, shape, and performance of the internals, those Kale optical switches mixed with the new Pulsar sensor at 8K, really the implementation here for an ergonomic mouse. I think even people who don't like ergo mice because of the size with how, maneuver with how maneuverable it is with your fingertips, um, I think a lot of people will enjoy the Feynman. The only mouse comparison that really matters between the Feynman and other ergos on the market right now, I think in terms of where it lands performance-wise with internals, etc., size, shape, the Vax E1 is going to get fairly close, but the Feynman makes little nips and tucks in pretty integral areas that make it feel smaller in the hand and a little bit more maneuverable. Again, you guys already saw the graphing, how this is an in-between of the X-Lite Mini and the X-Lite Medium. The Vaxi E1 is a little modification from a Zowie EC2, and the Feynman is definitely in the hand feeling like a modified EC2 and or Vaxi E1. Now, importantly, where it feels different is definitely where your palm curve hits in the ergonomic areas of your underside of your palm, as well as leading up to mouse one and mouse two, the Feynman feeling less meaty in that general area and making it feel as though um, it is a little bit flatter. So again, a little bit more inner hand maneuverability and a little bit more like the mouse isn't making you want to use more of your palm as opposed to your fingertips. So again, more maneuverability with your fingertips. In the uh, bottom left hand side of the mouse, it also does feel not as long and it does feel like the curve for your thumb is a little bit more aggressive. So to me, it feels like the E1 remains a little bit more flat, the uh, Feynman making it a little bit more ergonomic and like your thumb is curving in just a little bit more. Um, to me, I like that thumb curve a little bit more, but I kind of go back and forth both ways. Um, and, you know, depending on your preferences, keep that in mind as well. The Feynman kind of rolls off to the right side a little bit more than the E1 making the grip with feel as though it is a little bit thinner than the E1. So you might like the fact that there's a little bit of a higher placement in feel for your ring finger and pinky finger. Um, I like both of these mice a lot, obviously, but I do prefer the way the nips and tucks and curves feel on the Feynman. And most importantly, mouse one and mouse two feel as though your fingers rest a little bit more towards rounded towards the front bottom of the mouse so it feels as though your finger height on the mouse is a little bit lower than the e1 all of those changes put together in comparison make it feel like a more aggressive e1 a little bit of a smaller e1 with again a transition if you like a hybrid grip like i do it transitions very well into a little little bit of a palm mouse and more so a fingertip mouse you can claw this as well um, but particularly, I prefer to hybrid grip this. And it's like this perfect modification of the EC2 and the E1 that it's different enough that you could transition from both. If you already own an E1, it doesn't necessarily pay unless you like magnesium, the lower weight, the weight balance, etc. The Kale optical switches. You know, there's like enough of a reason to go either way. Um, but the Feynman to me is just clearly winner of the year for ergonomic mice. It looks, it has the aesthetic, it has the feel. 
perfect weight balance. And again, those kale optical switches and the little nips and tucks and curves make it feel like a beast of a unit. Last few things to know about the Feynman, it does come with an additional set of dots. The dots are fitted so that they fit within the ridges on the skate pattern on the bottom of the mouse. They are good skates. They work well and pair well with the Super Glide. And no mouse I've ever received is always 100% perfect. My Feynman does have a little tiny, tiny smidge of side play on mouse one and mouse two. It's very minimal. But the problem is, is the side play is enough that the mouse one, the mag alloy can bump into the right side of the body. And when it does bump, you do feel that material kind of like clinking together. Um, you can feel that obviously when you are playing in game, if it ever happens, but it's not something that like detracts from the overall experience, I feel. Um, but I do ever, I do feel an ever so subtle bump uh, if I am ever extending and hitting the material together. So other than that one slight issue with mouse one and mouse two, I really don't have any qualms with the Feynman. Again, the pick that I have for the ergonomic mouse of 2024. I know it's expensive and obviously it is magnesium alloy. It's got very good internals and you're either going to be in this budget range or you're not. It matches with other things on the market. You've got non mag alloy mice coming from Logitech and Razer that are also up there in price and you are competing with the uh, final mouse carbon fiber. To me personally, again, my material of choice is still magnesium alloy and you're either in that camp or you're not. To me though, Pulsar has knocked this one out of the park. That's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope it helped. If it did, please leave us up to the channel. See you guys in the next review. Peace.